Hi, this is John from the Ringlord. We will be making Sculpture Weave, which is sort of three-dimensional, oriental, four-in-one, using really, really tight rings. So basically, we make a ring that is just tight enough to allow four other rings to go through it. And when you make sheets, sort of stacked sheets of oriental four-in-one, they literally stand up by themselves. So you can see by this, this is a, a cube, and this is a, is a pyramid. Exactly the same weave, just sort of different configurations. Now, really easy to start. You're just making sort of simple one in one chains. Start with some uh, plain rings. These rings are sold. Um, let's see, we've got them in in at least six anodized colors, and I'll be using some colors later. Um, and they're sold as ultra low aspect ratio rings, or ULA rings, in the aluminum ring and then the anodized aluminum ring categories. Okay, so very, very simple one-in-one -one chain to start. Don't worry, it gets more challenging later. And we're just going to bring it to a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube. So really you can just start with three short lengths. And here I've pre-made a couple of them. And then we can connect these together into a, a three by three grid. And I'll do that by connecting the, the centers first. And the, like, there's no right way to start this. I could have done this in any any one of a number of ways. It's the first time where we're putting in a fourth ring. This can take a little bit of, of working. First of all, you want, you want the rings, each, each one of the four rings that's going through it to be at 90 degrees. And then sometimes you will need to there, sort of work it back and forth. We'll get lots of, lots of practice doing that. This first part will be f pretty much self-explanatory when I'm done, so I'm not going to worry too much about showing showing you every step of the of the way for the first level. Okay, getting closer. First level complete, and now we'll, we'll change ring colors. Okay, so just yeah, simple, simple cube of of Oriental four and one. Okay, and we will use black for the next level, and here I can show off my. There's the nice mixed mixed color uh, pile that I'll be working from. And important to have uh, good good players. There's a lot of this is a perfect weave for doing the, the slip and jab. You're, you're working away on a ring, working away on a ring, and all of a sudden the ring slips and you jam the player into your hand. So, so yeah, use. 
ideally use a player that's as close as possible to, to something like what I'm using with a, a nice wide tip and lots and lots of gripping force. So first step, we will be putting rings that are going, well these I guess will be in sort of an up-down orientation. So I'll be going all the way around just adding adding four rings around the center. Now this ring will would when we're done this ring will be standing up. Right now it's sort of as I added it sort of flops over. Just keep flopping them all in the same direction to make it a bit more obvious. Then we will make these rings stand up by sort of putting a ring. through two of them and we will again go around in a, a little bit of a circle Arrange it a little bit so you can. And like, yes, as you start, it will seem a little bit, a little bit floppy. But as you continue to add more and more rings, the cube will, will firm up. Okay. Next, we are adding. Uh, let's see, eight rings. Around the edge where we are, we'll be going through one of the gray rings from the first level and then up through one of the black rings in this uh, in the second level and then we're going all the way around Now, as you sort of turn the, turn the corners, when you you'll be going through, having four rings going through the one. So that's when it's really important to get it lined up. And it often takes a few tries. really find sort of like working the weave back and forth as you as you push really helps in getting in getting the ring into the that tight sort of that tight fourth ring in place. Really everything's easy except the fourth ring. So like in this case you can see I'm adding I'm adding a third ring, piece of cake. But now I turn that corner and I've got to the fourth ring. And sometimes then you're like, I'll, I'll try, I'll come at it from the bottom. Sometimes that won't work out well for me. I'll take the ring out, maybe try coming from the, from the top. It's all really about having the four rings all evenly spaced, each at 90 degrees. The closer you have it to have it to your rings to being perfectly spaced out, the easier it will be to get that fourth ring through.
from the other way. Sometimes in this weave, it just takes some working at it. There we go. Okay, and one more. Yeah, and that one went went real easy. Okay, so second level is complete. It's starting to shape up a little bit. And let's go for red for the next level. Now that's sort of a like the block level is sort of a half level. So think of this as sort of we're at we're at one and a half layers. So like there there is a repeating pattern, but we have not yet gone through gone through one cycle. This this layer is going to be different to add than the than the than the black layer. Now normally I would uh, complete sort of go through a go through a complete cycle, like I would add four rings going around here, but the problem is if you add that fourth ring you will never ever get the connecting ring through. So in this case I will be adding let's say two rings and then I'm going to, to change and just one second here Okay, so I, I make two rings that they're sort of at 90 degrees to each other. Just trying to get the focus a little better. You know, more light. There we go. Okay, so I'm going through those last two rings with, with a ring that's yeah, it's laying down like that. And then I will go back and sort of complete that, that first step. And except in this case, the, the, the next two rings that I add will go through that red center ring. And this is one of the few cases where you get to go through. You get to have this is the fourth ring in b both of these sets. So this is probably the more most difficult ring to add in the entire piece. So clicking into that first one, and there we go. Now, sometimes in the Swede you'll You'll want to chain those players so you can can get in there and so, and sort of work in the tight space. But I still prefer the the wide nose player with with more power rather than having the the chain nose player with a sharper tip on it. And okay, now for everything else, we can go in our pattern of sort of four or eight rings at a time. So I'm going around the outside, adding one extra ring to each of the the four rings in that first circle. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got a red plus sign. And for this next step, you're going th through a black ring from the, the outer circle of the, of the previous layer, and then through the red ring that you just added. And this will be eight, eight rings doing more or less the same thing, and going all the way around the outside. Some of the cool things I've seen done with this weave, probably one of the coolest, is making... Uh, they were much, much larger rings. I think we we made uh, rings out of... out of a 3 16th inch soft aluminum. And they were made into a, a cross that was used as a, as a mo memorial marker. So I got about a 3 or 4 foot tall cross made out of this weave. Okay, and one more set. What it's most commonly used for is making make a chainmail castle or chainmail skyscraper. Or a really cool application. Um, chainmail Tetris shapes. last step on this level is just adding the corners where you're just going in this case I'm going through the two red rings on the corner and if you look carefully at this I have another layer of this, this, this red layer is exactly the same as the first gray layer that we added just, uh, all of the red rings here will make up a sheet of oriental four in one and we've come full cycle. We're now adding adding to this red layer will be exactly the same as it was adding to the gray layer. And the it's interesting that we we've come full cycle but we haven't yet made a cube. This is two thirds of the way down a cube. So basically if you repeat the black layer and then repeat the red layer again, then we will have a a three by three by three cube. Right now we have a three by three by two cube. There you can see the, sort of the edge of the cube. So everything from here on is really just a review. So let's see, we'll use some blue for this next le level. I guess the one difference from the last time we did this layer is now all of these these first four rings are the fourth ring instead of the third ring. So you can see now, like where the first time we did this, the rings were flopping over. Now the rings are standing up by themselves. So this is truly what makes it a sculpture.
just going to get a tricky one. There we go. And now, going around this first set of, of four rings with four more rings sort of going, completing the corners of a square. Another interesting application that I have done in this weave is making a six-sided dice. And it took it wasn't exactly the uh, like, like obviously the, the shape is is the shape of a six-sided dice. The, the tricky part is getting the uh, the pips so that you can tell which which side is which. And it, it did work, but the problem is, of course, that the, the corners, like the same ring, can be a, the same colored pip could sort of show up on two adjacent sides. Yeah, I'll try to stay in frame here as I do this. Every ring that I add is the fourth ring on on the uh, going through the red. It's the four, the blue ring that you're adding is the fourth ring going through the red ring, and then every second time you do it, it's going to be the fourth ring going through the blue ring. But the like the weave is rigid enough that that the weave should be holding the rings more or less at at the right spot. So it actually it's it gets easier than it was in the first the first la layer. Like in the first layer, you had to hold the rings at 90 degrees, and now the rings are sort of being held being held by the weave. Oh, that's slow. There we It's reminding me of a Rubik's Cube, all these colored sides.
And the last layer, we'll do a green layer. So again, just two rings in this so we're going around this uh, inner square. Center ring. Now notice if I stop here I have sort of a pyramid layer with the the green the green layer and then the and the blue layer are making a pyramid. I'd have to make the like, uh, I'd have to expand the red layer and expand the the gray layer additional to make a to make a real pyramid. But this at least shows you sort of how the pyramid is made. And you can like you can flip this this over and start doing the same using the same techniques on the other sides. And there's no reason why you have to stop at a at a three by three by three cube. You can go four by four by four and etc etc and make rectangular rectangular cubes. And of course pyramid shaped uh, sort of, sort of cubes. Note we only make these rings out of out of aluminum, and we only use a, a softer aluminum. Like we don't use the we have made them out of our out of our bright aluminum for a, for one professional customer, but the the bright aluminum is about twice as hard to bend and uh, twice as easy to to break. So it is something where you just you just need a bit more practice and before trying any other materials. But I don't really see any any uh, real good reason for needing anything stronger than the soft aluminum. It's just because the rings are so tight. The uh, the strength really comes from the sort of the, the tight aspect ratio. You don't need to to switch to stainless steel for strength. And yeah, stainless steel rings um, in, in this size would be pretty close to impossible to, to work with. I also asked the question, why, why are only the 12 gauge rings available when anodized? Like we offer 18, 16, and 14 gauge rings in regular aluminum, but only the 12 gauge rings in, in anodized. And yeah, the 
we could uh, we certainly could offer the other rings and anodized, but uh, all about all about people want, wanting wanting enough of them. Like we need to we would need to make hundreds of thousands of of uh, rings in, in each color in order to get minimum anodizing batches. So, so if you want 16 gauge anodized Ular rings, great, but find lots of other people that want them too so we can justify doing a batch. The last ring. And there we go. Now I'll show you sort of all of the sides. So that's right, the green side, the last side that we did, which looks exactly the same as the silver or gray side, the first side that we did. And if you look at the edges, you can see the Basically, we had the first layer, then the black was sort of a, an intermediate layer, then the red, the middle layer, the blue, an intermediate layer, and then the green, the top layer. So if you sort of think of this as a dice, you have four sides going around this way that are identical, and you have your, your ends, let's say your one and your six, for example, are a sort of different different uh different weave. Oops, let's try that again. Perfect. Good, thanks for watching.